I have found in my over 24 years of studying personal magnetism. That personal magnetism is a natural result of true self-acceptance. And by that I mean being as you are, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, naturally arises as the appearance of personal magnetism. Today, I would like to share my personal experiences in relation to what I just mentioned in a way that benefits you greatly to manifest true self-acceptance reflected as personal magnetism. Now, personal magnetism can thus be likened to a meditation. And by that I mean, I once had a realization that I am that, which appears as a meditation practice. Thus, I am always meditating. Even if I don't physically appear to be, I am being that way. Thus, I titled today's conversation Mind Map, The Source of Personal Magnetism. Personal Magnetism, True Personal Magnetism, is the result of being as you are. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, Fulfillment, being as you are, each day, every day, wherever you are, with whatever you do, with whomever you're with, every place is an opportunity to realize and actualize personal magnetism. And to articulate this, I want to relate this over to the Robert Dilt's logical levels. It's been a while since I brought this up. So on the top, we have vision. Then we have identity, which is the self-image. We have values and beliefs that make up the identity, as well as capabilities, which is our skills, behaviors, which is our body language or any kind of behavior, habit, etc. And environment, which environment refers to the outer aspects of life. People, environment, information, experiences, etc. Now, above the vision, we have an I here. This isn't part of the Robert Dilt's logical levels, but I placed it up on here to articulate the point. This I is you. You that transcends the vision. You have a vision or you imagine yourself to be a particular way, whether you would consider that to be magnetic or not magnetic. You in your imagination are relating to the experiences which form the identity, values and beliefs, and we could see it reflected as capabilities, behaviors, and environments. So when I titled today's conversation Mind Map, The Source of Personal Magnetism, I'm referring to the source, this I, which is one with the all. I and my father are one. True self transcends vision, identity, values and beliefs, capabilities, behaviors, and environment. So when it comes to personal magnetism, being as you are acknowledges your true self as love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment realizes the self as love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. And upon realizing self, you experience now love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, which inspires auto-suggestions, to purify the mind, specifically the subconscious mind, to release identification to beliefs that are not true, 
you receive auto suggestions within from the source. Speaking of which, I was asked the question the other day of what do I mean by identification? Well, let's explore. So, as mentioned, who you truly are is love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. You are that. At the absolute level, the all is one, so there is no other at the absolute level. From the absolute level arises the individuals, the individual minds, individual bodies. All of those are appearances from and of the all. This has been articulated throughout the various scriptures of the world. Being one with all, how could we not be love? Being one with all and having all at the absolute true level of being. How could we not be happiness, bliss, satchit ananda, truth, consciousness, bliss, or sometimes referred to as existence consciousness bliss. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. True self-acceptance. True self-acceptance is acknowledgement that I am that. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. Now, having acknowledged that, we allow, we allow the changes to occur. We allow the mind to purify and life is experienced as a living meditation, being as you are. This plays out as what others could refer to when they speak with you, as being a magnetic person, being as you are. Thus, the auto-suggestions from the premise of being, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, Purify the mind and result in all the changes. So beliefs make up the identity. We have also beliefs about the world. Many different beliefs one could be identified with. The question is, are these beliefs true and authentic to self? Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. Every day we have an opportunity to discover as we're relating with others, as we're relating with ourselves, environments, information, circumstance, etc. We can be honest with ourselves and say, are we being who we truly are in relation to what appears? So identification is where the self here, the I, that transcends all because you have a mind, you have a body, thus you transcend the body, mind, and the beliefs in mind. The identification is the association of the I and what occurs in the mind. What occurs in the mind? Thoughts. And if thoughts are persisted upon, they form beliefs. Beliefs may be held lightly or they may be held to a firm conviction and to varying degrees in between. This is why one individual can find it easy to release identification to a particular belief, while another individual might find it extremely challenging to release identification to that same particular belief. No shame, no condemnation. Now is where all the power is. To release identification by thinking feelingly from the premise of being. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. So in relation to personal magnetism, we're interested in releasing identification to the beliefs in mind 
which manifest as experiences of inauthentic being. The way we do this is in the moment when we're relating with others. After the experiences of relating with others, prior to the experiences, and I'll give some personal examples, prior to the experiences of relating with others, we can bring awareness to this is awareness. Bring awareness to a belief that has been identified with, which is not true and authentic to who you truly are. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. And the mind is purified from that belief. For example, I mentioned and I'll keep bringing up the story because it articulates the point so well. In 2010, while I was building my IT business, I took on an initiative to teach speed reading workshops for a company called Iris Reading, North America's largest speed reading organization. Those were the earlier stages of the business. Paul and I are great friends. He's the founder. I've done a discussion on speed reading in which he shares a link in the description to it. You can enjoy that video if you're interested in speed reading. Now, having benefited from speed reading in 2005, I felt I had the experience to teach it. Now, prior to leading to the workshops in the earlier stages, I would experience fear, let's say Monday or Tuesday, and that would continue to increase and turn into a full-blown anxiety Friday. The workshops would be Saturday and Sunday. There were times where I would have difficulty sleeping. It was extremely challenging. It was what I would call a controlled chaos, as in I chose to put myself in the chaos because I wanted the benefits, which was to be able to communicate effectively to a higher degree. I love refining my communication capabilities. I love connecting with people. I love teaching any form of communication, sales, marketing, any form of communication, I genuinely enjoy. But it was very clear that I wasn't allowing myself to be. There was identification to beliefs. We can call them limiting or restrictive beliefs, inauthentic beliefs, that was resulting in the thoughts and the emotional relatability, which at that time I could call unpleasant, very unpleasant, which was being experienced that way through beliefs, being experienced through beliefs, even though that is not who I truly am. Who I truly am, who you truly are, which you and I are no different. We transcend all of this. We transcend this world. We transcend the beliefs. We transcend it all. We are up here, one with the Father. Yet during this time, I, I was not aware of it because I was identified with that belief and thus I was operating through that belief. And so it manifested as my emotional experience, the behaviors, the environments, etc. So... What I did was bring awareness to these beliefs. I questioned them. I said, what are emotions revealing to me? Emotions are energy in motion, yet they are being experienced a particular way, which I could call anxiety. Why is that? And then I was able to discover the belief. I was believing that Others would not accept me the way I am. In other words, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment was conditional. Conditional. Even though I know with certainty that not only do I know how to speed read, but I benefited greatly throughout the years from what I had learned. And now is an opportunity to share that with everyone. 
yet I appear to be holding myself back. Why is that? Why does it appear that body and mind generate behaviors, experiences that seem to hold back? Well, truly, it only appears as the individual, the person holding themselves back due to identification. Thus, by accepting self, true self-acceptance, we release that identification. So how did I do it? I created some auto-suggestions. People accept me when I communicate. They appear to love me for who I am. They appear to accept me for who I am as a result of acknowledging who I am. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. These realizations of true being, true self-acceptance, automatically manifest as wonderful conversations and a wonderful teacher and student experience. Wonderful teaching and facilitation. Wonderful benefits, which they gladly report to me at the end of the workshop, which they did. And so what ended up happening? Well, each week, and I would do these workshops for a while, every Saturday and Sunday, it would become easier and easier and easier. And got to the point where I experienced excitement prior to the day of teaching the workshop because I genuinely desire to do it. As we've been discussing, life is a celebration of God, expressing God, that I am, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, in and as the outer expressions of life, your form of creative expression. For me, it's communication. For me, it's entrepreneurship. A living meditation. So if I'm not living in flow, which is true way of living, why am I not allowing it? It's because of identification. So again, I transcend the beliefs. I can identify with the belief through what? Well, these beliefs are formed through suggestion. What appears as an outer suggestion is actually occurring within in relation to the appearance, in relation to the person, in relation to the environment, in relation to the information, etc. It happens a lot of times when a person seeks, we can call this seeking, for approval, validation, confirmation, or signs of the being they truly are. And they form conditions. For example, my own personal experience. If the person looks at me a particular way, I had suggested I am this interpretation in relation to that, which was essentially because this person looked at me a particular way, it means not being loved. Is that really true? Knowing that true self is love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, we know with certainty it's not true. Thus, what we're doing on the journey to actualizing higher degrees of personal magnetism is we're receiving within the auto-suggestions. They are based on love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. As a person accepts self, true self-acceptance, knowing that I am, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, it automatically manifests more so each day in increasing frequency on a continuous basis as what we can call personal magnetism. Now, it is key thus to, with repetition each day, continue abiding as you are. Ways you could do this, I used to bring this up before, four modalities. Number one is auto-suggestion. So, like the example that I gave, you can generate auto-suggestions, which you receive within via intuition. That still small voice within. That true inner voice. 
that is distinct from mental chatter, that speaks being, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. We can hear the still small voice, which arises from the silence. After a meditation, while walking in nature, flow-based activities, which is why I make flow a priority, because I realize that by being as I am, flow, the inner voice, the still small voice, is crystal clear, and I listen to myself and trust myself. And by doing so, by inwardly speaking from the premise of being that I am, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, mind is purified, and I experience life as a celebration, more and more so each day, in increasing frequency on a continuous basis. And as mentioned, you and I are no different. We transcend all of this, all of these appearances. We transcend the beliefs in mind, and thus we can choose to accept self, true self-acceptance, being, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, which manifests as personal magnetism. So we receive the suggestions within. It purifies the subconscious mind and manifests as personal magnetism, what you say, what you don't say, how you say it, how you don't say it, body language, etc. I've been studying neuro-linguistic programming for decades now. In the earlier stages, it was confusing to me, but now it is crystal clear. And I've been around some of the best neuro-linguistic programming masters, not particularly Robert Diltz, I've never met him, but I've been around some of the best. And what they have taught me is a concept called modeling. See, when they see somebody who is, let's say, very magnetic or has a successful, whatever, sales career, is a wonderful executive and is highly effective, what they do is they model them. They look at their environments, their behaviors, their capabilities, the, what their values and beliefs are, their identity, which again is made up of beliefs, and their vision and how they believe reality to work, their worldview, how they relate with others, environment, circumstance, information, etc. And they, from there, create a model which someone can step into and start to embody those attributes. And what they find is that people then start to behave that way and also can get similar success results. Through modeling, what they are generating is an identity construct, a self-image construct, a concept of the self. If done in an authentic way, it is a representation of the true self. And if not, it can contain limiting beliefs or restrictive beliefs. And by that I mean in relation to our discussion. Not true and authentic to the true self. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. Which is why I recommend receiving within, going within, and receiving the auto-suggestions from being that I am. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment which purifies the mind to manifest as the ideal self-image, the ideal concept of self, which is made up of values and beliefs that manifest as the ideal capabilities, the ideal behaviors, and the ideal environments. Now, what we also talk about here is how all of that was received with it. A lot of times I have found that these individuals that were modeled did not look around to see what others are thinking before they think for themselves. Rather, they think for themselves. And by that I mean specifically, they receive the auto-suggestions 
from within. Thus, accepting and relating to experience from the premise of love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. True self-acceptance, which manifests as this identity from the source here, which is one with the Father, the All. And then a modeler comes along and models them. But do they capture everything? That's the question. Do they acknowledge that all authentic living arises from being that I am? Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. So authentic personal magnetism is actualized through repetition. Repetition of particular experiences and then relating to the experiences in an ideal way. They were reformed, which we could then say they were a product of their environment. Now, more accurately put, it is what they were relating to their environment. For example, one can have an extremely challenging environment, whatever that means for the individual, it's up to them. They know what they consider to be challenging. And the other person can experience that environment as easy, flow-based. Why is the individual who transcends the experience, experiencing the environment differently. They are experiencing the environment through their beliefs. So what ends up happening then is the identification to beliefs are experienced in and as the environment. Environments where they automatically seem they end up in and or how they experience those environments. And so in relation to modeling, if we go straight to the source, acknowledging that we already are, I am that, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, it manifests as how a person relates to the environment in an ideal way. For example, if one sees the environment as an opportunity to release identification to a belief that is not true and authentic of being that peace that they are, then what happens is their experiences change in relation to the environment, and the environment also appears to change. Now, this is a practice, and a practice that I've been applying since I came across this information back in the days and continue to do so. Now, even though I got into NLP like 24 years ago, I didn't understand it until I came across Thinking Grow Rich in 2004, where he talked about the subconscious mind and auto-suggestion. Subconscious mind and auto-suggestion. See, because it's in the subconscious mind where the identity, the values, and beliefs are stored. If a person brings awareness to these beliefs and releases identification to them, that aspect of mind that stores the beliefs, that automatically generates what we can call personal magnetism or lack of personal magnetism, manifested as how a person experiences their skills, capabilities, etc. You could say how flow-based they are when they're in their performance, their behaviors, and their environment. So we can model someone, be inspired by a person, and embody those attributes. What I'm emphasizing here is that all of that arose from the same source within you. It is all within you, just as it is within them, just as it is in anyone. It was a result of, and I went into deeper study of what was going on throughout my years, working with thousands of people. And what I realized was the ones that think for themselves and they manifest natural, authentic charisma and personal magnetism without studying this stuff. And there's a benefit to studying this stuff because let's say they did not know about this. So some way, somehow they ended up being that love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, and manifested as personal magnetism. And if you know what's going on, which is what we're talking about today, then it 
amplifies that because that other individual, what would happen sometimes is they would be out of their flow and they wouldn't know why they were out of their flow. They would just assume that yep, it's just random. The individual that knows this, what we're speaking of here, understands that they can change all of that. And it's not random. So that stated, when I went to the core of what was generating the experiences of personal magnetism, between those that were modeled, in which models were created to replicate their experiences, and those that did not get modeled, they have never been involved with a modeling study, yet they were personally magnetic. I asked a series of questions, and I really got into what was going on within. They either said it the way that we're saying it right now, or they said it in a different way, pointing to the same source. Acknowledging that they are love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, and allowing themselves to think from that premise of being. So auto-suggestion is one. Self-talk. So self-talk, for example, a person relating to experiences. If a person, let's say, rejects them, there's an appearance of rejection. The one that acknowledges that they are love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, doesn't see that experience as they are not love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. They purify the mind because let's say someone had shared something with them. They had this belief identification as a result of needing approval, confirmation, validation, which formed an identity. They realize they transcend the identity. The true self is transcendent to all of this. All we're doing here is accepting self. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment in relation to appearances. That would be number two, self-talk. So orienting our self-talk from the premise of being that love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment purifies the mind in relation to appearances. For example, if something appears to distract you, it doesn't actually do that. We know that that's identification, to believe that something outside is taking our attention away from our vision. So what do we do then? Allow our attention to remain on what is related to the vision. That purifies the mind from that belief. It releases identification. And then what happens? You appear to be more magnetic, we could say. Now, the third thing is revision. So essentially, in relation to the past, we've done a recent discussion on revision. I'll link in the description to that video where we get into extensive detail about it. Which, where essentially what I do is if I experience a relationship from the premise of not being that I am, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, I revise it. And then number four, environment. Now, it's interesting because we mentioned that environment is something that a person relates to. And if we don't know what's going on, we might say that the environment made the person. But really what's going on is what the person is relating to the environment. Now that stated, it's also key to acknowledge that there are wonderful environments where a person feels at home, at peace. For example, nature or wonderful conversations with a friend, or a mastermind. We're relating to that environment in a way where we feel comfortable. And that's very helpful because that is a form of auto-suggestion. Why do I say it's a form of auto-suggestion? Well, we're relating to experiences. So if we're suggesting to ourselves, this is a wonderful home, I love this view of the water, I have wonderful friends, this is such a beautiful weather, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the way we feel, we think feelingly upon it, further affirms our being, love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. Now, in environments that are not experienced that way, we have the opportunity then to transmute the experience if you desire to stay there. Certainly, I've no longer been in particular environments that I was in before, having released identification to beliefs that were resulting in me ending up in those environments, I no longer ended up in those environments. And then at a later point, when it felt natural, 
I would find that I would go back to those environments and those environments would be experienced as bliss, happiness, love, fulfillment. So what I'm getting at is the cause is within. There's only one cause. I am. That's the father. The individual relates to that I am. Love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment, which manifests as the outer expressions of life. True self-acceptance and relating to the environments accordingly to transform the environments to reflect your heaven on earth, which then people will say, you have a high degree of personal magnetism. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You could say, I manifest my true, authentic self through mind, visible as the outer expressions of life, reflected as experiences of personal magnetism. I know that I am love, happiness, peace, bliss, fulfillment. Through mind, authentic being is manifested in and as the outer expressions of life, more and more so each day, in increasing frequency on a continuous basis as far as the senses proceed. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.